and welcome everyone. Please follow the star on the bottom right of the screen. This is the surface of the moon. We're looking at structures, buildings made to look like snow. Yeah. I find myself not showing these photos. They're the most crucial photos of any surface of any planet or moon. You're looking at objects that could be a different color because the wavelengths could be giving it back to us uh, a white color. I tend to think that they're not. They're green or maybe possibly very yellow or red. You can see the other structuring very clearly. Um, entrance is always symmetrical. Notice that. The entrances are basically always symmetrical. Look at the domes at the back, left here, right, like the line of toothpaste. This is the surface of the moon in the southern highlands couple of hundred kilometers from Clavius Crater. I'm not hiding it from anyone. It's my belief that the moon is inhabited. When you look at the surface and you look at these photos, um, I think I found a proper way of explaining this to you guys that you will understand. It sort of looks like the moon has caught the chicken pox. Some of you have to stop looking for shapes. Look at objects. Look at the objects that I'm presenting you with. Don't look for symmetrical objects. Don't look for roads. Don't look for uh, anything that could look like here on Earth. Just look at the way things are placed. The way things are placed on the moon. Have we not been told that the moon is a flat, gray, uh, dusty surface? It's not. That's all I'm declaring. And if it's not a dusty surface, and now what looks like structuring, even though they're not all symmetrical, be careful. They could all be symmetrical, but just be blurred due to optics. There's some kind of emission, you know, radiation, or but it looks like an electromagnetic radiation or an, an electromagnetic field, possibly around these objects that are all lined up on the surface. Could they be... Uh, generating energy I mean are these energy sources is the moon itself an energy source you know when you wonder all how it's so bloody illuminated it doesn't make any sense now we're gonna go see a beautiful unknown possible asteroid that I got and wait till you see the size of it guys but again it's a sliver um, flat you know I always find flat flying disc like objects. What do you want me to say? It's it's what I'm finding. Literally, literally what I'm finding. You know what's fantastic about, about seeing the photography this way? Look at the north side of this asteroid. It's like we're on a moon. Well, it's like it probably is a moon. I mean it's the size of a moon. But look at the surface. Imagine landing on it, exploring these pieces. That are flying everywhere maybe the elements on this are um could heal cancer you know we're we're missing elements here on earth uh, you know may possibly not but we possibly could be but look at the objects that you you see on the surfaces of these beautiful unknown celestial objects just absolutely fascinating I mean, it mesmerizes me this is everything for me for me to be able to see to catch a celestial object flying by in uh, our galaxy like you know objects that aren't supposed to be there either they're going by you know what if somebody didn't see this one you know you say to yourself wow i got a chance to see it x-ray of course always revealing and this object was the strangest object but you can see the the, the contour which is absolutely incredible is cooling off or what looks like it's cooling off is a blue, radiant blue light that's all around the surface and here at the bottom other quite brilliant colors, of course, radiation gases, whatever it may be, it's still just beautiful. You can see some of the surface that uh, some of this color is actually coming from the surface. You could literally see it that it's very close to the surface. Hey guys, I want to talk to you about CCD imaging. My telescope is equipped 
to be assembled with an assembly kit if I buy it to do F2 photography. All cameras and telescopes function with F10 photography. And what do I mean by F10 and what am I talking about Fs, right? F2 photography will permit me with my secondary mirror on my telescope to get 25 times more exposure than 1400 Edge HD optical tube can be transformed into an imaging machine. And I'm going to show you what I mean by the imaging machine and how it can be done. I'm going to take a look right now at how we can change this machine, this telescope, into a F2 machine. So what's going to happen is this machine, guys, can be transformed with an assembly kit, okay, to do F2 photography. It is an F10 machine right now. All telescopes are F10 machines. This can be transformed into a CCD imaging beast. No jokes. A special option that I, I'm looking online, hard to get information of it, but they're That's talking to give us 25 times more exposure. Imagine that. You know what, how that happens? They're playing inside. You're gonna, you've heard it before somewhere on some channel. The field of view, the depth of field, right? For 3D imaging, like I do. To be able to try to get a photo clearer and better. But now we have this beautiful machine that will do it all for us ourselves. I'm gonna start off with the F10. I am going to immediately look into getting the F2 assembly kit to uh, get it fit on. Now what I'm waiting for is that uh, the T adapter and the T ring uh, to be able to fit the so camera on the, the back. The key factors for good CCD imaging, guys, is the exposure time, like I was saying, the field of view, and the image size and the pixel resolution. So as the F number goes down or gets faster, what's going to happen is the exposure times needed will be decreased. The field of view will then increase. The clarity will increase 25 times more exposure and all that with this beautiful big glorious mama. I'm going to give us make a CCD machine out of it. So guys, I have a telescope and we just got ourselves an amazing camera. We didn't even know it. So by my compressing an image and doing the same principle, uh, basic technology of the F2 photography, but just didn't know how to explain it basically, but I was playing in the depth of field and I'm compressing the image, seeing it smaller, zooming into it. Therefore, giving us better pixelation resolution, giving us a better exposure and more clarity. Everything is compressed, compact. We can see more detail in the surface. A way of viewing a photo like this, and then I transform it into 3D imaging These are the website contributors. We have a new list of contributors that are uh, donating. Also, Nick, Dane, Margaret, Mike, Rita. I love you guys for it. Thanks a lot. We're going to build ourselves an observatory. We're going to try to raise enough money to maybe get um, the big glorious mama permanent out there. I'd love to be doing this full time, guys, in the near future. Uh, thanks for the support. Thanks for the interest and everything. WSO YouTube channel, Mr. Steve Olson. Check him out. He's looking at what's going on up in the sky, interviewing several people, and we interact on Tuesdays.